Well, let me get uh, started, uh, Dr. Cheney. We're going to have our wellness webinar tonight on natural solution to men's solutions to men's health, how to keep the men in your life healthy, which is extremely important. And Dr. Cheney um, has his PhD degree in biochemistry from UCLA, and he for uh, most of his esteemed career was professor uh, at, you know, at North Carolina. University of North Carolina where he taught first year medical students and he ran an active cancer research program and uh, we're just we're thrilled that Dr. Cheney is so willing to come and share his knowledge and wisdom and expertise um, and so much so because he is one of three recipients in the history of UNC to receive their School of Medicine academic uh, well, the Excellence in Teaching Lifetime Achievement Award. So, uh, Dr. Cheney, I know you have a lot to share with us uh, this evening. Okay, well, thank you. And, of course, this is a perfect time to be talking about men's health. Uh, yes. We just had Father's Day, so the men in your life are probably top in your, top in your, you know, your consciousness right now. So this is all about how to keep the men in your life healthy. And for the guys that we do have listening, because... You know, often it's the, the guys kind of ignore this stuff, and it's a, and it's the women who keep us healthy. But I know there's some guys on here listening as well, so this is for you. So you know, one of the things that's really interesting is we think of ourselves as a stronger sex, right? Oh, somebody's added some pictures in there. <laughs> I did. I somebody's knew that. Somebody's doing some editing here. <laughs> uh, wrong. <laughs> Uh, so let's look at what the statistics actually tell us. So I guess the picture is how we view ourselves, but uh, the picture, well, the reality is very much different. Because if we look at boys under age five, they're 25% more likely to die than girls. 60% hmm. of sudden infant death occurs in boys. Uh, and then yeah. it doesn't get any better as we get older. Uh, you've probably known this, that women live longer than men. It's you know, just a couple of years here, but uh, if you're, I guess if you're an older woman, it just probably seems like a lot more. And if we look at the major, you know, the major causes of death, mortality rates are higher for men in every mm -hmm. category. 50, 55% higher for death from heart disease, two times higher for the 10 most common forms of cancer. So those are some pretty sobering statistics. So we have to ask ourselves, why is that? And I put this part together a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but it is, um, <laughs> there's a lot of truth here. Mm -hmm. You know, a real man doesn't need to lose weight. That's all muscle. Uh, only 26% of participants in weight control programs are men. And, you know, you had that picture a minute ago of the, of the guys. That's the way we view ourselves. I saw a cartoon a number of years ago that I thought was, really very well done. There's this fairly nice looking middle aged woman looking into a mirror <laughs> and what does she see staring back at her but an old haggard woman with a pot uh -huh. belly. Um, and then there's this man, this bald man with a pot belly, staring <laughs> into the window and what is it in mirror and what does he see staring back at him but an atlas. So <laughs> we have a a different perception uh, of what we what we look like and what our health is about because a real man doesn't eat rabbit food you know what mama fixed is is good enough for me <clears throat> some of you may have married men like that for all that i know uh, a real man doesn't need to work out because you get all the exercise i need at work or, or when i do yard work you know you've heard those excuses before maybe from time to time you've made that excuse before a real man doesn't need to go to the doctor because it only hurts when. <laughs> <laughs> so you only go to the doctor when you're really hurting. Men under age 45 visit doctors half as frequently as women. <clears throat> We're not talking about just going in when you're, when you're sick. We're going in, talking about going in for regular checkups, things to, so you can actually find out some of the things that might be wrong with you before it becomes critical. A real man doesn't need to watch their diet. I'm not going to give up my, and you can put whatever it is in there. But we guys can be pretty stubborn about that kind of stuff. 
a real guy doesn't need to take supplements. Um, again, <laughs> some of you women, are, I hear Joe chuckling. Now, I know Mike probably doesn't give you this this problem anymore, but could have been when you got started. You may know women in your group who complain mm-hmm. that I'm not taking all. Their husband says I'm not taking all those pills. So yeah, you know, keep keep going on. A real man likes to take risks. What do you mean slow down? <laughs> Um, and if they do work out, I'll just use the stuff I read about Muscle Magazine. Uh, and the, the last one there is, is, is an interesting story because, you know, there's all sorts of junk in Muscle Magazine. They've got these, um, you know, they have these stimulants and things like that. And a lot of guys like to use those things because they increase your energy level and you, you feel like you can work out for longer. Um, so I remember a few years ago, and I guess this is probably 15 or 20 years ago now, but uh, there was one of these sports supplements that the FDA finally decided that they were going to take off the market. And there were big headlines about it. So the very next day, we get this call from this guy that looked up our, um, looked up our you know, our advertisement in the yellow pages, saw that we you know, carried food supplements, and he said, can I get some of X, whatever X happened to be at the time, so I need to get that stuff before they take it off the market. Wow. So the FDA had already said, this stuff will kill you, but he wanted to get some before they took it off the market. You know, that's kind of the attitude we guys sometimes have. So <clears throat> let's now put it in perspective, and this is the same kind of perspective I like to use. When I'm talking about men or I'm talking about women, um, that paradigm for holistic health where we look at the, all the things that we should be doing, weight control, diet, exercise, and supplementation. And really what we're looking for is that sweet spot right there in the middle, that red circle where we're taking all of those things into account. So let's start with weight control. And um, that's, you know, you've heard this before. Obesity is becoming an epidemic. So uh, let's look at some statistics, and it's kind of, this is always a fun thing because these are statistics that come directly from the Center for Disease Control. So if any of you wants to generate slides like this, you just go to cdc.gov, look up obesity trends, and it's all right there. Uh, but back in 1985, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, started to track the percentage of obese individuals in each state, state by state basis. Now what do we mean by obese? Well that's a BMI of more than 30, but for most of us BMI is kind of a femoral term. It's, it's hard for us to get our mind around it. So one way to think about this, if you happen to be five foot four, that means more than 30 pounds overweight. So we're not talking about a little bit chubby here, we're talking about seriously overweight and Back in 1985, they were just starting to collect data. So there were a number of states for which are white there. They didn't have any data. But for those states they did have data, it was either less than 10% obese, that's the light blue, or 10 to 14% obese. That was the darker blue. So let's click ahead. Ten years later, that's what it looked like. You didn't have any states that were below 10%, and now... Almost half of the country, the percent of obese adults was 15 to 19 percent. So fast forward another 10 years. <clears throat> now you can only find a handful of states, about four states, three or four states there in which there's only 15 to 19 percent who are obese. For, and then there were some states where it was already over 30 percent of the population who were obese. And, you know, it hasn't gotten any better. This is 2008. Uh, I just haven't put, I bothered to put in the latest statistics, but it keeps getting worse. The, the, pers- the obesity rate goes up and up and up. So, that, you know, that, then we start to put that into perspective. You've got to think about that because a lot of people say, well, you know, I can't help it. Um, I, it's in my genes. I was born to be this way. Well, you know, there is a genetic predisposition to obesity, but genetics doesn't change in a period of 25 years. So when you look at a 
increase in obesity like that over a 25 year period, that's not genetics. We have to totally rethink the way we think about genetics. And this is one of the things I always taught the first year medical students um, when, we, when we really started talking about diseases like heart disease, diabetes, and talk about things like obesity. We need to rethink what we, because we, we think of, if we think about a genetic disease, we're usually thinking of something like sickle cell disease or cystic fibrosis, where if you've got that gene defect, you've got the disease. But with, um, with something like obesity, it's actually, we're talking about a genetic predisposition here. There's about 80% of the adults in this country who are genetically predisposed to become obese if they follow a typical American lifestyle. So it's not that it's unavoidable. It is always a combination of lifestyle and genetics, but it's just a genetic predisposition. And in this case, it's not a rare disease. It's the common form. It's a common genetic uh, phenotype. Most people will become overweight if they follow a typical American lifestyle. Hmm. So let's look at that a little bit more. <clears throat> and let's talk about why weight control is so important. Well, that's because our body chemistry changes when we become overweight. We start producing more fat and cholesterol. You know, this is, that's one, again, one is sort of an interesting concept because everybody knows that a lot of fat and cholesterol in our diet probably isn't good for us. That's going to increase our, our risk of heart disease. But what most people don't know is when we become overweight, our bodies become fat and cholesterol producing machines. They pump out fat and cholesterol. They make fat and cholesterol, pump it out in the bloodstream. So now we no longer have to eat it because we're making it, and that increases our risk of heart disease. The other thing that happens, our tissues become resistant to the effects of insulin. The insulin, you know, is a hormone that keeps our blood sugar levels under control. So as we become resistant to the effects of insulin, that's going to increase the risk of diabetes. That's why obesity and diabetes are so tightly intertwined. But it also it turns out that insulin stimulates the growth of many cancer cells. So it increases our risk of cancer as well. <clears throat> and then the other thing that happens when we become overweight is our blood pressure starts to rise. That's going to increase the risk of heart disease and stroke. So, you know, and... So the, the bottom line is that men are likely to be more likely to be overweight than women. <laughs> Don't know where you get those pictures, but those are scary. <laughs> yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the 180 turnaround program because it really works. Um, so click ahead. So if you just look at the results with the 180 turnaround program alone, and I think all of you are familiar with this clinical study, but it bears repeating, you know, because of the amount of protein in the diet and the leucine that's added, uh, you've got a diet that's going to uh, retain your muscle mass when you're losing weight. So this the clinical study that Jackley did at the very beginning was with, um, you know, people who worked at Shackley, they put them on the program. There was no exercise associated with this program. Now, they lost about 18 pounds, and on any other diet out there, they would have lost about 7 pounds of muscle. That's the black line. But what, what, the, what the clinical study showed is they retained 100% of their lean muscle mass. And that's important because muscle burns off calories faster than any other tissue in the body. And, you know, so then that helps us keep our metabolic rate high without dangerous herbs or stimulants. But, you know, the magic really happens when you, when you start using that 180 smoothie mix and you add in the exercise component. So this was a study, and again, I think most of you are familiar with this study. But the average age of people in this uh, study was, I think the beginning age was 55, so these were all 55 and older. They were enrolled in a three, three days a week exercise program at the YMCA. They were all obese when they started, so enrolled in the three times a day exercise program. And the ones, the gray bars, were people who just worked out. The blue people in the blue bars were ones who used the 180 smoothie after each workout. So you look in the center there. The ones who were drinking the 180 smoothies after the workout had a better increase in lean muscle mass. 
If you look at the left and the right, you can see they had a significantly greater weight loss and body fat loss. Now, a couple of things I want to point I want to make about this. You know, you know, one of the things that a lot of people will tell you is when they decide to lose weight, well, I'll just start exercising. That weight's going to come off. Well, this was um, this was a nine month study, and if you look at the weight loss, that's the gray bar there on the left. You didn't get a whole lot of weight loss. It's only when you you accompany that with the 180 smoothie mix that you got significant weight loss. But the other thing I really point I really want to make because if you're a guy and you're listening to this, probably one of the things you may or may not you know need to lose weight. But one of the things you really probably want to do is to shape up, to to have that better body shape. Um, and if you think about it, if you're increasing your lean muscle mass and you're losing body fat, that's going to shape you up. So my question to you is, what are you doing about your weight? Because you've got a perfect solution right here. Okay, next slide. So let's move on to diet. What should the diet look like? And that's because diet's important. That helps prevent those diseases that kill us. I'd like to talk about preventing the killer diseases. So how do we achieve a good diet? Let's look at that. You start with, um, you know, uh, it used to be the Food Guide Pyramid, mypyramid.gov, um, but that's been surpassed. Go, go to the next slide. Oh, I guess I guess maybe I didn't put the, I guess I, I guess no. in this version I didn't. Okay. Um, so what happened? It's interesting. Uh, you know, they, they were, we've had the Food Guide Pyramid for a number of years, and eventually the experts realized that only 3% of the population <laughs> was actually eating according to the Food Guide Pyramid. So they came to the obvious conclusion that it must be too complicated. So they replaced it with a simpler version, the Food Guide Plate. Just four pictures, a picture of the a picture of the dairy, a picture of the meat, vegetables, etc. Um, and so that was going to be much simpler. Guess what? Now we're a couple of, couple of three years out from that, and only 3% of the population eat according to the Food Guide Plate. Yeah, it, it's not the complexity. It's just that most people haven't accepted that that's the way we need to eat. Um, so start with the Food Guide Pyramid, and now what you do is you go to, it's, 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 it's that's changed, you go to www.myplate.gov, because it's a Food Guide Plate. If you're serious about it, that's where you can go and, you know, enter your, your, your weight, your exercise level, your gender, your age, things like that, and it'll generate a pretty good healthy diet for you. That's probably the best way, because that food guide plate is, is virtually useless. But if you're interested, that's how you do it. So that's, that's how you decide you know, how many servings of fruits, vegetables, and so forth you're going to be eating. And then you eat whole foods as much as possible. If you're shopping in the supermarket, shop around the edges. You've probably heard that before. Uh, maintain, I would love that picture. <laughs> maintain the proper weight. Uh, we've talked about that, and emphasize those fresh fruits and vegetables. You know, I call it the ultimate, the, the ultimate convenience foods. I mean, banana comes with its, its own wrapper, and by the way, the wrapper's biodegradable. What could be better? But if you look at the studies, we know that fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, significantly decrease cancer risk, heart disease risk, stroke, stroke risk. Uh, if you go on, you go on, click the next one. Um, diabetes, cataracts, macular de degeneration, diverticulitis, and if you're eating a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables and not so much processed foods, you start cutting back on the fats. You start following the food guide, um, the food plate guide, and, and really eating a balanced diet, you will start losing weight as well. Okay, let's look briefly at the exercise component. Because regular phys physical activity really prevents that accelerated aging. So let's talk about the benefits of regular exercise. Uh, it helps you increase your lean muscle mass. Um, it, it improves insulin resistance. Um, and that, it, you know, sorry, it improves insulin response. And so, you know, when you, if that's going to decrease your risk of diabetes, 
If you increase your lean muscle mass, it decreases blood pressure, which is going to decrease your risk of hypertension. Um, it increases metabolic rate, which uh, is going to give you better weight control and increases HDL levels. That's a good cholesterol. So that's going to decrease your risk of heart disease. Um, improves cardiovascular output, so and that's going to strengthen your heart. It also strengthens your bones. So all of those are good things. You know, looking at that picture, uh, I just did another seminar, similar slide, but I found this great picture to put in there with uh, somebody doing crunches, and overhead there was <laughs> this, this fairy, and they said uh, something about the ab fairy. Most of us are relying on the ab fairy. <laughs> which basically means that we're, we're really not doing the exercises we should be doing. We're, we're hoping somebody's going to uh, sprinkle uh, pixie dust over us and we're going to get the abs we're looking for. And you're saying that doesn't work, right? That doesn't work. <laughs> no, there is not an ab fairy. Shucks. <laughs> I know, shucks. Um, so most men don't get enough exercise. Uh, my recommendation, or not, not my recommendation, sort of a minimal recommendation, really, because <clears throat> there are many, many experts that feel that it should be more. But a minimal recommendation is 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise five times a week. Well, 50% of men don't meet those recommendations, and 15% are, are genuine couch potatoes. They're getting little or no exercise. So the real question to be asking yourself, and, and perhaps tactfully the men in your life, is how much exercise are you really getting? Are you following those guidelines or even doing better? Okay, so let's look at supplementation because, you know, the supplementation is important. And, I, you know, and, and here again, I leave it to last, <clears throat> not because I think it isn't important, but because I think there are too many people who just think of this as I'm going to take some supplements and that's going to make things all better. And somehow you can't take enough supplements to overcome the Big Macs and uh, frozen pizza and all those other, and, and, and perhaps the beer and those other things, uh, make the, the other changes as well. So let's look at that. Where do we start with it? We had a holistic program of supplementation for men. Start with the Vitalizer and the 180 smoothie mix, Vivix and Nutriferon. You know, that's something that we call the prescription for a healthier life. You add in the saw palmetto and the core energy. And I'm going to talk a little bit about each of those and why those are so important. So next slide. <clears throat> so why is Vitalizer important? That's because it's all in there. <clears throat> and yes, that, that's a great graphic that, that Shackley provided of all the fruits and vegetables. And it's not that you get all those fruits and vegetables in the Vitalizer strip, but you get the nutrients, the vitamin C, the B vitamins, and uh, the beta carotene, and those sorts of things that you would be getting from all of those, all of those fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, so if you think about antioxidants, Vitalizer contains all the major antioxidants, 26 of them. And that's important because they destroy free radicals, they reduce inflammation, and free radical generation or reactive oxygen species, however you like to think about that, um, oxidative damage, those are all terms that you may have heard before. Oxidative damage and inflammation are thought to be involved in heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. So, um, you know, we can't say that antioxidants are going to prevent those diseases, but we know that they destroy free radicals, they reduce inflammation, and those processes are involved in the major diseases that kill us. Um, then we've got vitamins that contains all the essential B vitamins. So what are B vitamins useful for? Well, they lower homocysteine levels, um, and, you know, that can, is homocysteine um, is a amino acid uh, byproduct that's thought to be an important risk factor for heart disease uh, and also dementia or, or old timers disease, something that none of us really want to experience. Okay, now we're ready for the next slide. Um, so, you know, if you think about, uh, you just continue on with that. Uh, we've heard how important vitamin D is. And we're really just learning. Uh, the, the, 
what we're learning today, you know, we used to think of vitamin D as something that helped with calcium absorption, helped to build strong bones, but we really didn't think much beyond that. Well, it turns out that almost every cell in our body has vitamin D receptors. So we're finding out that it plays a lot of other roles. It plays a role in, in keeping our immune system strong. It plays a role in decreasing cancer risk. It may play a role in decreasing risk of diabetes and heart disease. Um, so it's become kind of the miracle vitamin. Uh, it also contains trace minerals. And, and trace minerals, like Think, for example, chromium, magnesium, vanadium, they're important for blood sugar control. And, you know, if you look at that combination, you don't find that in a whole lot of, you know, there are a lot of supplements on the marketplace that really aren't anywhere as near as complete as our Vitaly, so they don't contain trace minerals like that. Um, and if you do happen to be diabetic or pre-diabetic, so your blood sugar levels are a little bit out of whack, you're going to be losing these minerals along with the, into your urine, along with the glucose that, that's starting to spill over into your urine, that blood sugar that's starting to spill over into your urine. And then all the omega-3 fatty acids, not just the one, one or two, but all of them there in balance. That's important because omega-3 fatty acids produce insulin resistance, and therefore they lower triglyceride levels. That's a risk factor for heart disease reduce inflammation, lower blood pressure. I think if you click next, okay, and then um, they contain the friendly bacteria. That decreases the production of cancer-causing chemicals in the intestine, slows the absorption of sugars from the intestine, strengthens the immune system. So to think about all of that stuff from that one convenient daily Vitastrip, um, that's a pretty amazing what that what vitalizer does but you know that that wasn't all i recommended let's look at the shackley 180 smoothie mix and remember and, and here again that's clinically proven and we show i showed you that earlier to help you preserve the muscle mass when you lose weight so that's going to help you lose the weight because it keeps your metabolic rate high and it's going to help you keep that weight off and if you're working out you want to shape up your body that's going to maximize your workouts help you increase the the increase in lean muscle mass, and the secret to both of those is leucine, that essential amino acid. It's not some mystery ingredient that monks on the top of a, the Himalayas are the only people that know about. This is uh, this is one of the essential amino acids, but science has shown that is it's the one essential amino acid that actually stimulates the muscle cells to make more protein which is what gives those muscle cells their strength and their bulk. And it also it helps keep your energy levels up all day long. And it, you know, it helps prevent the blood sugar swings. And the secret of that is a low glycemic index. Okay. And then Vivix. And, you know, I think with the problem with Vivix is we call it a cellular anti-aging product. And so <clears throat> immediately... Young guys think, hey, I don't need that. Young gals, too, probably. Um, <clears throat> but I really want to make the point that Vivix is not just for people who don't want to grow old. And that's because resveratrol and the other polyphenols in Vivix improve insulin sensitivity. And so what happens is that many people report, you know, go on Vivix and they report that they have lower blood sugar levels. It helps them control their blood sugar. Resveratrol makes blood vessels more flexible. And, you know, when your heart's pumping, if the blood vessel is flexible, it doesn't take as much pressure to push it through. It's when the mm. blood vessel gets hard and constricted. So many people report lower blood pressure. Resveratrol actually turns down the gene that makes cholesterol in the body. So many people report lower cholesterol levels. And then the best part of all is it makes... So if, if none of those got your interest, because those <laughs> are talking about preventing the diseases that kill us as men. Now, women should be interested in this as, this, as, this as well, but this is a men's health seminar tonight, so I'm just talking to guys here. How we prevent the diseases that kill us as men, but if that weren't enough, it makes our mitochondria younger and more active. And you might say, what are mitochondria? Where they're the little power packs in our muscle cells, well, in, in all of our 
all of our tissues, but our muscle cells particularly, that give you energy. So a lot of people report that mitochondria, you know, the Vivix helps give them more energy and more endurance. So even if you're a young guy, you're thinking about working out, you're thinking about athletics, Vivix should be one of your best friends. And then there's neutrophilia. So, you know, my, my point here is if you get colds or chronic infections frequently, like every winter, you need to strengthen your immune system, and neutrophilin can do that. But if you suffer, you know, the other thing that's really interesting about this is neutrophilin isn't just an immune booster. It really helps the body normalize the immune system. So if you suffer from hay fever or other allergies, you need to modulate your immune system, and neutrophilin can do that as well. So, but, you know, I think, I, again, you'll talk to guys and who will say, well, I almost never get sick, so why should I bother with something like neutrophilin? Well, you know, there's all these things going around, swine flu, bird flu, SARS. Now, those are things that have kind of come and gone, although we still know that, that the bird flu and sorry, said the swine flu are endemic. Um, and, you know, some of them, they've mutated yet again. They could become the next deadly pandemic, or it could be something else that is just on the horizon we don't even know about. Um, you know, we just saw, a, there, there was just a headline recently that the mosquito, there, there's some, that actually there was somebody in North Carolina who was discovered to have this disease that actually came from Africa and has recently spread to the Mediterranean, sorry, to the, um, <clears throat> to the um, islands, you know, the islands to the south of Florida and um, the Caribbean, Caribbean islands, um, and it's a very painful, debilitating disease that's carried by mosquitoes. <sighs> so they're worried that, you know, it's starting to take, make, if this person gets bitten by a mosquito, who knows, it could start spreading in our area and then move somewhere, probably not Minneapolis. I mean, mosquitoes, <laughs> mosquitoes all get killed there during the winter, don't they? <laughs> um, I don't know. We're supposed to have a really bad uh, mosquito season this summer. And I, I was actually being somewhat facetious like that <laughs> I because know. I went hiking in northern Minnesota. I think I was about carried over, carried off by the things. <laughs> They're as big as birds there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, you know, so you never know what's coming your way. Uh, there's flesh-eating bacteria. There's multi-drug resistance. Strip. I mean, again, I, I think you probably all know stories about this, but I was a good friend of ours. Their niece went into the hospital recently uh, for a relatively simple surgical procedure, and a few days later, after you know, they came home from the hospital, and it, the, the, the surgery wasn't healing started festering, turned out that they had developed, uh, you know, they'd been infected with a multi-drug resistant bacteria, mm. flesh-eating bacteria Ugh. they picked up in the hospital. And so, you know, they were, were, you know, had to go in and have very high intravenous and very strong intravenous antibiotics. You know, took them weeks to get over that. Um, you know, so you never know what's coming your way. Your best bet is to make sure that your immune system is always ready. And finally, as a cancer research, researcher, I can tell you that your body creates new cancer cells every single day of your life. And you're relying on your immune system to destroy them before they form tumors. So you need that strong immune system every single day of your life. And then there's the special products. I mentioned those briefly. The saw palmetto complex, that improves prostate. And, um, you know, I guess if you think about that, uh, the best description of that was when Shackley first came out with the saw palmetto. And I, when I was doing a, a, a talk, a, somebody invited me to do a talk about saw palmetto, so I gave my talk. And at the end of the talk, this old gentleman comes up to the front and he said, you know, that saw palmetto was really great. I've had to give up my title as midnight plumbing inspector. <laughs> so it tells you guys all you need to know about saw palmetto. <laughs> and 
And then core energy is another thing that improves the efficiency of your mitochondria by a totally different mechanism than Vivix. And, and once again, uh, it's a vastly overlooked product, but that's another thing that's going to give you more energy and more endurance. So um, June is a great month to discuss men's health products. Um, you know, and if, you think, if you start with the Lean and Healthy Kit, that Vitalizer and the Shackley 180 smoothies, that's going to give you energy. To build, it's going to build your muscle, keep you healthy. It's going to keep your mind and body sharp. But then for more energy and endurance, consider Vivix and Core Energy. For your allergies and colds and just to keep your immune system healthy, think of Nutriferon. And for prostate health, think about saw palmetto. Now, the, the fact is that by the time you're in your 80s, 90% of us guys are going to have some prostate problems. Um, in your 60s, I've forgotten the percentage, it's something like 50 or 60%. And so, you know, it's going to happen to you. You might as well start early to try and prevent it. And I think that's about it, isn't it? Let's see, do we have another slide? Oh, no, no, we have two let's, more. Let's put it all together, two more. So you're looking at this. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at the original. But so if we put it all together, our health is not what it should be. Um, guys, you know, that's because we kind of ignore it. But we can change those statistics. And if we want to change those statistics, a holistic approach is best. We include weight control, exercise, healthy diet, a holistic approach to supplementation. And next slide. Ah, uh, yes, this is it. So, again, one of the things you will hear from perhaps some of the men in your life or as you, uh, as you talk with uh, your customers and they're trying to work with their guys is so you'll hear the thing, well, you know, the good Lord's just going to take me whenever he decides <laughs> to take me or <clears throat> I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just faded. To, you know, whenever I drop dead, I'll drop dead. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it in the meantime however they express it. Well, I think it's not how long you live. It's the quality of life that you have while you're living. Because once you develop heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, and start to you know, experience the health consequences that go along with those things, the quality of your life gets worse and worse. So that green line there shows... You know, for most Americans, that's what happens. We, we peak out. Have you ever heard that, that, that you know, 30 is, is as good as it's going to get? <laughs> it's all downhill from there? Well, that's really the reality for many Americans. But it doesn't have to be that way. Because if we really follow a holistic approach to health, including all of the things I talked about, we can reach that goal where... We can get to be 100 and still be in pretty daggone good health. So that's my, my hope. My mission is to share this with as many men as possible so that we can help the men in our lives enjoy, enjoy a good quality of life for as long as possible. Thank you, Dr. Cheney. And that's my goal, 100 in good, life, good health. Uh, uh, very informative and lots of great information for us to share with those men in our lives that we really truly care about. Um, let's see if we have a f any questions here. Uh, uh, how much and when uh, do you take Vivix, Dr. Cheney? Um, I take Vivix. I actually take Vivix twice a day. I take it in the morning and the evening, and I we take my wife and I take the. Uh, regular Vivix in the morning and the kosher Vivix in the evening because they actually have slightly different formulas. Pomegranate has certain health benefits that the muscadine polyphenol extract don't and vice versa. So um, we take one in the morning and one in the evening. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Uh, at what age should a man start Supplemento? You know, I would you know I would recommend starting in their 40s, so that you're um, mm -hmm. you know you want to start 
I mean, not that it's not going to help at any time, but like many things, if you can intervene before you're starting to have significant symptoms, it's going to be uh, even better. Hmm. Okay. Low testosterone, can this improve with the Rx for healthier life? <clears throat> so, there is a whole uh, mystique that's come around low T now, and it, it's really become... <laughs> Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of doctors making a lot of money off of that, and those of us in the cancer field kind of shake our head at the idea of injecting or rubbing testosterone levels, on, testosterone on you, um, <laughs> just to increase energy and that sort of thing, uh, because testosterone also increases the risk of prostate cancer. It stimulates the growth of, of prostate cancer cells, <laughs> and as we get older, the risk of prostate cancer increases. There is a reason why God made us so that we make less testosterone as we get older. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's, 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 a, there's a reason for that. So, you know, I would be, I'm always leery about things that increase testosterone. Although sure. I will tell you that the probably the best, safest way to increase testosterone is to work out, uh, you know, do do a vigorous workout where you're um, doing a mixture of aerobic and strength training and then use physique right afterwards because there is clinical evidence that the workout itself, if you have the proper nutrition afterwards, will help increase testosterone levels. Hmm. But then again, now you're doing it naturally. You're not, you know, not doing it artificially. That's, un that's something that's under the body's control. It's, it's a normal response to exercise. Interesting. Uh, the same for core energy. I guess how much and when do you take that? Um, you know, that I just take with meals, and I just uh, I take one in the morning, one in one in the evening. And is it appropriate to give to young men in their early twenties? Oh yeah, that, that's you know, all you're doing is is improving the efficiency of mitochondria, and and again, this is something for men in their twenties if they're athletic. Um, that's something I just like the you know it's interesting. Um, if you if you talk with athletes that actually use the Vivix and the Core Energy, they will tell you it gives them a real benefit. Hmm. And do you take Vivix with a meal, and or does it matter? Um, we take it with a meal, and, and for most people, it doesn't matter. And probably, you know, probably for me it wouldn't matter either. I don't, can't speak for Suzanne. But for some people it's, um, you know, just, it, for some people, it, you know, it, if you take it on an empty stomach and have nothing else, sometimes it can be a little irritating. Mm -hmm. It's a very individualistic response, but we occasionally see that. And did you say that the Shackley 180 is best taken after exercise? Well, um, again, if you are, you know, if you're going to, if you are working out on a regular basis, that will give you the biggest bang for your buck. So on days when you work out, yeah, take it after your exercise. On days when you're not, you know, you could take it another time. <clears throat> now, there are many days where I will, I might do the shake twice a day, or the shake, you know, maybe a meal bar and a shake as well. And I'm not trying to diet, but it's um, just a part of my healthy lifestyle. Hmm. Okay, great. And, so it, that... and I guess I should clarify, that's not the only thing that I eat because I'm not trying to diet. <laughs> that's good. I'm, I'm not just taking a shake in the morning, meal bar for lunch, and nothing else. But, uh, you know, I would eat, a, you know, would use a shake and a meal bar perhaps in place of some of the things that would otherwise be, I, would either, I would otherwise be eating that would be less healthy. That makes sense. That's a good point. Well, thank you, Dr. Cheney. Um, people are thanking you here on the comments and uh, are saying that, you know, they learned a lot and it was a job well done. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, and uh, a happy belated Father's Day to all the men on the call. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, okay. Dr. Janie. Goodbye. You're welcome.